What's up everyone? It's Chris with the Little Treasury Channel, where we bring you awesome watch content at least once a week. And if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to make sure that you're alerted as soon as our new videos are released. Today we're going to do a comparison of the new Grand Seiko Sport models being the SBG E255 and the SBG J237. If you aren't familiar with these models, please check out my previous video on each one to get all of the intense details that you crave. As always, these watches are for sale, and if you have interest, our contact information is in the description below. Let's get on to the video. Grand Seiko recently released five new sport models, with three iterations in the SBG E series, and two in the SBG J series. They have distinct differences, but both are GMT models. We will compare the two most similar models today of each series, which are the SBG E255 on the left and the SBG J237 on the right. So let's start off with the similarities first. Both timepieces are sport travel companion pieces, not dive watches. They are meant to be traveled with and act as your rugged buddy that you can take anywhere and have GMT functionality. Both are 200 meter water resistant, but again, not a true dive watch. Both have GMT hands and graded bezels with even numbers and graded chapter rings with odd numbers. The indices on both timepieces are the exact same, which are gracefully finished and angular. Both pieces have an offset screw down crown at the fore and a closed case back. Both pieces have basically the same bracelet with a glorious new micro adjust. That's where the similarities end. The cases are totally different with the SBG E255 having a 40.5 millimeter width, 48 millimeter lug to lug, a 14.7 millimeter thickness, and 172 gram weight, while the SBG J237 has a 44.2 millimeter width, a 14.4 millimeter thickness, and a 50 millimeter lug to lug, weighing in at 188 grams. The bezels are quite different, with the SBG E255 being ceramic and in dark blue. This is your less flashy option, while the SBG J237 has a totally captivating sapphire bezel divided in half in a brighter blue and half white with a triangular marker instead of the 24. The biggest difference though is that the bezel moves bi-directionally on the SBG J237 to keep track of the third time zone, while the bezel of the SBG E255 is fixed and will only allow you to track two. Both watches have the same Lumibrite on the hands and markers, but the SBG J237 has a fantastic glowing bezel that gives the numbers behind the white section a backlit look. The movements are also completely different, with the SBG E255 having the Spring Drive 9R66 with a 15 second a month accuracy, 72 hour power reserve, and a totally smooth sweep. This comes with the power reserve indicator which some people love and others prefer emptiness instead. The SBG J237 has the 9S86 movement, which is the high beat, which beats at 10 beats per second, so smoother than most automatics, with a plus five to losing three seconds a day accuracy, and a 55 hour power reserve. The SBG E255 can be yours for a wonderful $6,200, while the SBG J237 will come in at $6,800. Now for my humble opinion, the SPG E255 is a smaller timepiece and will fit better on the wrist for most people, even though it's a tad bit thicker than the SPG J237. My wrist is six and a half inches, and this watch is about the maximum size possible that I could pull off, but I prefer not to go to that size. If you have a larger wrist or just like a bigger look, the SPG J237 will totally be for you. Both are very comfortable though, I might add, and the uh, SBG J237 is also very eye-catching and is a flashy piece because of that sapphire bezel, which just picks up the light from everywhere. The functionality of the two time zones versus the three time zones could be important to some folks that are seeking omniscient power. Otherwise, I doubt it would make much difference to most unless you have a specific purpose. The spring drive versus high beat could be an important point to consider too, which I recommend either comparing which speaks to you more or which you already have in your collection to make that call. So I will recommend the SBG J237 for those of you who'd like a little more functionality and enjoy larger size with more flashy style. While I will recommend the SBG E255 for those of you who would like a smaller piece and to draw less attention, 
but have a very attractive timepiece on your wrist. Thanks for watching today, everybody. I really hope you enjoyed the content. And if you did, make sure to hit that subscribe button and give us a like. And we'll look forward to seeing you next video.